Good day. Today I want to show you how to completely assemble K cups using our manual four cup Buckeye Coffee K cup sealing machine. We're going to show you three different ways to fill the cups with the coffee before you seal them. Seal them. We're even going to show you how to label the sides of the cups to make them custom labeled and even the bag some bagging options. Uh, these are all just suggestions. You can use what you want, but you'll find that uh, they're very practical. Keep in mind this video is for micro fresh roasting companies. This is not for the big guys who produce tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of K cups per month, uh, producing often stale coffee before it even gets on the shelf. And, uh, uh, delivering stale coffee to the customer. This is designed for the small roasting shop that may want to increase their uh, weekly or monthly output of coffee by 20%, sometimes more, as K-cup machines uh, brewers are becoming increasingly popular. And now with the, ad, uh, the event of the K-cup 2, there's been a bit of a hiccup, so to speak, in the development, but we're going to show you how to get past that as well. Okay, here we go. We're ready to do a shot. Now, as you noticed, that really overfilled it. So, and that's at 10 grams. So that's one of the problems you run into with the uh, machine is they, because it's not tamped down or anything, 11 grams can actually blow out the cup, creating quite a mess. If you look down here, and I'll see, if you look down, we've put a uh, catch-all for that because we know that a mess is created with these machines. As you may have seen in the little filler machine, a lot depends on the grind, uh, the weight of the coffee, and things like that. In some instances, 11, ounce, or 11 grams fit into the K-cup without any issue. But we've found a much more effective way. In our search to be productive in... Uh, making K-cups. We came up with the idea of a K-cup tray, and this is a really heavy duty, about 11, 12 pound stainless steel grade uh, quality tray. Actually about the same quality stainless steel that we use in parts of our uh, coffee roasters. And we put 25 K-cups, and the idea behind that was we would fill the K-cups. This is on a food grade 304 stainless. Any excess could be uh, pushed off and reused. So you could use different fill methods. I'm just going to use this, uh, our typical uh, bagging. And you can either use uh, some type of uh, straight um, tool to level everything out. Uh, you could use your hands, whatever, uh, and just push it right across the, the surface of the cup, uh, kind of packing it in a little bit. And that pretty much does what you're going to need for the K-cup. And because we allow enough room, two inches, to uh, get our hands under there, it's easy to pop them out from the bottom, or you can grab them by the lid. So here you have a nice K-cup ready to fill. Well, we thought we would create these, market them, just to help customers, and they were quite pricey. They cost us about $125 a piece to sell. And in the process, one of our chefs, who's a coffee roaster, came up with an idea that I personally think is much better. If you look over here, you see a simple baking tray. Let's talk about that. These are simple baking trays that you can buy either from Amazon individually or you can buy them for about five, six dollars from Webster Rock by the dozen. And we recommend if you get into a production mode to buy these, you know, even buy the racks, have one uh, person filling all the cups, putting them in the rack, another person pulling them out the other side of the rack and doing the uh, sealing. Uh, again, the same basic method, you can use whatever tool you want some people individually scoop in there. We find that the easiest way is to just take and fill the cups with coffee. Any excess that runs over 
because you're allowing a couple inches on each side will uh, be able to be reused. Okay, we've basically poured on using the uh, bag filler our uh, coffee and uh, we haven't leveled it out yet but I've leveled one out I've put it on the uh, scale that's been teared for four grams and you'll see this comes out to 10 grams what we're finding depending on the grind of the coffee depending on the roast of the coffee um, how whether it's medium or dark anywhere between 9 and 11 grams is the maximum you could put in these K cups and believe me uh, that amount of coffee will produce a great cup as we'll show you a little later on so you basically just level these out or or you could just put them on the tray and let the guy that's gonna seal them level them out or you could level them out yourself uh, and then put them on the tray you level them out and then uh, once you get them all level it's time to seal to 170 degrees Celsius and you can see I've got a setup here to where the K cups are accessible the lids are right beside of that uh, we'll fill the K cup machine uh, pop them in seal them and then we'll have some place to put them I'm just using right now for practical display a real small pot but uh, you'll want to uh, have something bigger so you can pop them out a lot faster so the important thing with the uh, Putting these on is to make sure there's absolutely no crumbs or grounds, I should say, on the rims because that's where the, the lid seals and then just pop them in. And as you'll see when we go through this process, if you can seal 10 an hour, I mean 10 a minute, <laughs> 10 an hour is pretty bad. You can seal 10 a minute. That's 600 an hour. And you'll see when you get into a routine of this and you have everything set up, doing 10 a minute is no big deal at all. I kind of recommend the rubber gloves that fit tightly on your fingers. I don't like these plastic ones at all as I can not get a grip. But you'll want the uh, sanitary rubber gloves, kind of similar to what is used in a doctor's office, but not with the powder on it. And... Uh, so you get those in there, and I messed that one up because I'm using these crazy gloves. And you just, you're ready to go, you push it in there, you pop it down, you watch for the light to appear, the light appears, you pull it out, you pop it back out, put them in, and you're ready to go with another load. And as you can see, they're perfectly sealed. Uh, while I'm talking about sealing, you'll notice these are the K2 lids, and we discovered that it's all in the rim. Uh, uh, right now we just have the, the blank ones, but we're getting ready to, uh, in fact we've ordered, they're shipping them now. It's going to say micro roasted fresh coffee or something to that effect. I'll show you a picture as I edit the video. And then we're going to show you how, uh, while it'll say that, which will be unique, in indicating to clients that this is the fresh coffee they bought, not the stuff from the store, on the side you will label uh, what particular brand it is. Some people say, well, I want uh, labels with my individual company name and my brand on it. And that's perfectly fine. But you have to buy 200000 uh, We can give you a number to buy that direct from China to save you some money. But a lot of people don't want to buy 200000 We're in the micro-roasting business. We are not uh, trying to be identical to... Uh, these big K-cup manufacturers, we I want to be unique. And so uh, these work fine. Pretty soon when we have the, uh, the name Micro Roast, Roasted Fresh Coffee K-cup 2 ready, and you'll have your little label on the side, that makes us unique because we don't want to imitate the big companies. We want to stand out as different. And you'll see in just a minute how we do that. A lot of people ask us about uh, what type of grind to use. We found that between a uh, grind for a drip coffee or pour over and uh, espresso, 
is a good mix. It allows the uh, entire coffee to be saturated as it's shot through the K-cup machine. So we hope that helps you. Just to comment on the uh, original K-cups, not the K-cup 2, the ones with the silver uh, lids. Make sure you put the shiny silver part of the lid up. The uh, part that's adhesive is the uh, matte looking color. And uh, we're going to show you the reason I'm doing these is because there's still hundreds of thousands of regular K-cup machines out there and so you can use these. There's also other ways to go around the K-Cup to experience uh, something like Roger's Coffee did. Um, but I want to, I'm making these right now to show you how the K-Cup 2 lids that we offer currently work fine in a K2.0 machine, but the uh, regular lids do not. So you'll see that test in just a minute. As far as labeling and marketing your coffee goes, a lot of uh, K-Cup users are using the one pound and two pound bags. You really don't need the ones with the valves for this because the coffee's been ground and sealed in the K-Cup. As we've mentioned in previous videos, we recommend uh, online labels, printing them off your own uh, laser, preferably, or inkjet printer. Uh, what you want to do is not only list it as coffee, but have a big note there that it's uh, K-Cups, or you can put a sticker on it that says K-Cups if you want to use your regular label that you use for coffee. So you just simply seal that on there, and we use the, generally the smaller size in this. I believe it's a two and a half by four. I can uh, give reference to the code, but that's entirely up to you how you want to label your uh, K-Cups. And a lot of people, that's all they do. They just fill them up with, they can put a dozen of these K-Cups in a one pound, 24 to two pound. But what we like to do is go a step further. As I mentioned before, our new lids, that will be in about a month or so, we'll have on here micro fresh roasted coffee, K K2.0 ready. But we want to be able to uh, highlight each individual uh, coffee so that if people buy several, because that's what we want to encourage people to buy several and to take home, and when they're sitting in their little racks, uh, all they have to do is pop them out to see. In this case, we're labeling these as Nicaragua. And that way, when people get them, they fill up their little racks. When they go to check them all, they uh, simply know these are the fresh ones we got from the roasting company or from uh, the coffee shop. Uh, let's pop them out and take a peek. Aha, this is the Nicaragua. Or in this case, this is the Brazil, this is the uh, Colombia, or whatever kind you have. Now you might be looking at these and thinking, wait a minute, this looks good, how do I do this? These are online labels as well. I believe it's the code OL6000, and these are, I believe, 1.2 inch stickers. We also use these same stickers on the back of our bags, saying I was born on showing a little bean and we hand write the date they're born on. So you can use these for multiple purposes. I think it's about $38, $40 or something like that for 4,800 of these labels. Now you might be thinking, well, I'm not into Photoshop. How do I do this? We are making available to anybody that buys a K-Cup machine virtually every coffee they can think of. And if they come up with one we haven't got, we'll make one for them and provide PDFs so they can download these all they need to do is print them with their printer, or inkjet, or laser. You can print them on either glossy. This is a matte uh, finish, but you can print them on either glossy or matte. It's entirely up to you, and it gives that special touch. You can even custom do these if you want with your own company name on that. That way it uh, doesn't cause any problems with the issue of trying to put them on top of a uh, K-cup, because on top of a K-cup, which looks cool too, you still risk when that puncture goes in that it could affect taste or even affect the roasting or, or I'm sorry, the, the brewing process. We'll, we'll pop one in to see what happens in the next test. K2 lids, and as you might notice, we have these all labeled. This is Sumatra we've made. And uh, 
We've also uh, got the ones that are made not for K2. We want to show you how they don't work in the K2. We also wanted to test putting a label right on top and seeing how that might affect the uh, either the taste or if the uh, inks could affect the uh, brewing or even just the puncturing through an additional piece of paper could affect it. So first of all, I want to show you on the K2, we're going to pop in the standard old uh, K1 lids and when I go to do that, I don't know if you can see it there, but it says, oops, this pack wasn't designed for this brewer. Please try one of the hundreds of packs with Keurig, the Keurig logo and it costs lots of money and aren't that fresh. Well, because I don't want to waste anything, I'm going to put one, this one over here and it's telling me I'm good to go, so I'm going to go with the uh, medium-sized cup, let it do its thing. Now, this we just saw it do the oops. Now we put the K2 lid in, and we put it down here, and ready, I like to have mine strong. I'm clicking on the strong, ready, click, there we go. That's brewing our coffee. Now, as you can see, the K, uh, the regular Keurig did a nice cup of... Uh, Sumatra. Now we're going to try it again with the little label on top to see how that affects things. Let me grab another cup, put that in there, see what happens. Okay, it's signaling that it's okay to do. I'm going to make a nice strong cup. So uh, we're going to see what happens. But I want to mainly focus right now on the uh, regular Keurig to see how it was affected, first by taste. I don't notice any taste difference, but how was it affected? It certainly didn't stop it from uh, brewing, but as you can see, it punctured the uh, name label, which could have created some issues. It did look like it did a little bit of uh, issues with softening the paper. If you would have printed this on an inkjet, you would have had real problems with this getting all moist. We use a laser printer, but I, I still think the way to go is the label on the side. We're not trying to imitate the big companies. We want to be unique. All we're bringing to the table is the first opportunity for people to have fresh roasted K-cup coffee. And that's what we're all about. Many people like to put their uh, K-cups in a uh, container like this where they can quickly grab them in the morning. Um, a lot of times they're looking at the label, seeing all these, they know they're the fresh roasted coffee they picked up from the coffee shop. Popping them out if they made multiple choices gives them a quick view of which brand uh, they chose. These are just ideas and suggestions. You may come up with your own. You may even want to share it with us. New ideas. Uh, our purpose is to forward and advance the microfresh roasting industry. We feel it's the most exciting uh, industry there is. It produces the best tasting coffee. People even 50, 60, 70 years old, for the first time in their life, avid coffee drinkers are tasting fresh roasted coffee. Many of those folks have gone to the Keurigs or the K-Cup machines or the pod machines to make their life a little easier and we want to bring them the freshest roast we can. So I hope this video has helped you. Uh, let's keep a constant communication of how we can help one another because the micro fresh roasting industry is a team working together. There's plenty of opportunities out there. We want to help each other to produce the best coffee and get rid of the industrialized waste that people drink in the mornings.